Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on part three of our vest. Yay! Get excited! You would have done the little gauge swatch that you see up on the screen right there as part one. Part two would be this piece here where we did the beginning and we did all the way over and you would have finished there of part two. Part three is all of this and part four will be the very next section of our vest where we will be creating one of the fronts for your vest, all right? But for today, you'll need your crochet hook that you've been working with, a pair of scissors. You'll definitely need your darning weaving needle. Today, we're gonna to weave in some ends as well. We didn't do that last week. Uh, you will need your one stitch marker from the beginning of your row, one for the end, and you'll need one to use somewhere around here when we're marking our spot to re-add our yarn and we'll talk about that throughout the tutorial and that's pretty much all you will need for your piece today all right so I'm not going to talk anymore I'm going to let you get started creating part three the final part of the back of your vest good luck all all righty guys where you should be is right there if you haven't landed on the base of your vest then you might need to check your rows okay we initially did the first two rows of the back yeah not the armpit area just the back and then i sent you off on your own to do this many rows for your size all right that's how many rows you were told to do so all together four from this part right here to the end you should have this many rows Okay, your stitch count would not have changed. Your stitch count would be this many stitches. Okay, in total. But altogether, your rows from the beginning would be this many rows. All right, so initially we are now ready to start making the other side, opposite side that is, of your armpit or your base part of your work this is the easy part guys for the back it's a very easy well no not really <laughs> it's the closing part for the back all right so I probably should have got you to do one more row and that's everyone all sizes so flipping your work like normal let me grab my ball of yarn has gone crazy so flip your work like normal oh, let me get a nice close-up here we go all right now obviously I've left my little stitch marker in there so I don't lose my stitch and that's always a good thing. All right, so remember what we did at the end of the row? This is the base of our row, so we're keeping it straight. We're keeping them all straight anyway for this part. And you're just popping your normal standing double crochet in that very first stitch, like so. Pop in your stitch marker. Perfect. And then once again, you are doing your basic double crochets all the way across your piece. All right. Now, I probably should have got everyone to do an even amount of rows instead of the odd. And I do apologize there. But what I want you to do right now is just, uh, here we go, just complete this row. Go right to the very end. And what we're going to do at that end is we're going to cast off. Okay. And then restart near the armpit so in the meantime just go all the way across get to this end right here and I shall meet you back here once you're done Alrighty, guys this is what you should have completed one row right to the very end and I said we're going to cast off there but before we do this is the base of your work. That's where your armpit is. Where you are at the base, what I want you to do is count your stitches across and place a stitch marker on the count that you see up on the screen right there. All right. I say place your stitch marker on that count and that's the number that you place it on. All right. So go ahead and do that now. Count, pop your stitch marker right here. And now we're going to continue doing the rest of the rows all right so for a starters what I want you to do is complete this area here so that means what you're going to do you finished your last stitch all I want you to do is pull a loop through give yourself a nice tail for weaving in end grab your scissors 
and give your work a cut. You've cast it off there because you're going to restart here at your stitch marker. So if you haven't placed your stitch marker yet, go ahead and place it there now. All right. Once you have your stitch marker in, well, let me bring this down a bit more. That's better. Once you have your stitch marker in, like normal, see that's where we ended up. You're going to flip your work like normal or turn it like normal as though you were turning to start here, but you're going to place your hook in that stitch marker stitch. All right. So grab your hook and just pop it in the stitch with your stitch marker. That's a little bit far away. Let's get close here. Pop your hook in that stitch. That's not the right one. Pop it in the stitch with your stitch marker. Come on, Mary, you can do this. All right. Grab your thread, your new thread, and you're going to cast on like normal. So we're going to just grab the loop. Now that is too close. We're not doing too well today, are we? Pull the loop through like so and just grab your tail, passing it forward. This is just locking that tail in place. Yeah. So you're chaining one. Now, normally you would do a standing double crochet here. But what I want to do is I want to be able to do these two stitches together. So you're chaining, you've chained one already. You're going to chain a second one. All right. Then you're going to do a normal double crochet in the very next stitch. Like so. I'm crocheting over my tail, not necessary. Pull a loop through and just do your normal double crochet. Just pop your tail at the back. And what I want you to do is place your stitch marker in the top of that double crochet, not your chain two, that double crochet right there. Now, when we come back, we're going to do a normal double crochet. But for this one, because we're trying to do two together there, we wanted to keep this angle going that way. All right. So pop your tail at the back, you can crochet over it if you like, and all you're doing is doing your double crochets all the way across your row. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before. Uh, you should have, let me just show you quickly, across this row here, the full part of that row to this row, you should have uh, this many stitches showing on your screen for your size, all right? So now what I want you to do is continue that row get to that stitch marker there and wait for me there and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty guys, so what you should have is that you would have started there and you would have gone right down there like normal and we're going to flip our work like normal. Everything's the same here. Oh, by the way, you'll start to see this go down and this base of your work should never have changed. It should still be straight all the way through. Otherwise, you may have missed a stitch or something like that. But in the meantime, it's easy. Okay, so what you're going to do is do a standing double crochet as you've been doing all along, all along. Yeah, place your stitch marker as you've been doing all along, that never changes that area. All right, and now you've got your double crochets all the way across your row, like normal. Super easy. All right, well, I'm not gonna let you sit here and watch me do that. But before you do, I just wanted to let you know, I'm not sure if I mentioned before, once you've done from here to here, you should have, and that's including these chains here as a stitch, just for this row. And actually, it's not including the chains. It's starting from that stitch marker to the end. This is the amount of stitches you should have. All right. Now, what we're going to do now is continue that row, get to the last two stitches. Don't do them. Get to the last two stitches, and I'll meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of this row. Now I asked you to leave the last two stitches and what I classify as the last two stitches is the stitch with your stitch marker and the stitch just before it. Alright, so what you're going to do here is do two crochets together. Alright, and how we do that is we put our yarn over our hook, 
pop our hook in that second last stitch, pull a loop through, yarn over, pull through two, hold it there. Yarn over your hook, straight into the stitch with your stitch marker, pop your hook in, pull a loop through, four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two, three loops left, yarn over, pull through the last three loops. And that's double crocheting two together, which now becomes one when you look at it from the top. You see the one stitch up the top and you kind of see two posts stuck together. That's double crocheting two together. All right, take your stitch marker out and there you go. If you were to count your little Vs across the top, this is how many stitches you should have for your size. So count your little Vs, make sure you have that amount of stitches for your size, all right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to flip our work like normal and you're going to do your chains again, okay? So chaining one and two. All right, remember how we did that before here? That's what we're going to do here. Yarn over our hook, you're going to skip this stitch, you're going straight into your very next stitch right there. Pop your hook in, pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, two loops left, yarn over, pull through the last two, and you're going to pop your stitch marker in that top stitch there of that one. Ignoring the chain two, because that is now your two together. See, because before we were increasing, it was, it, it was okay to do a standing double crochet there. But now when we're decreasing, it has to be the chains. Because if we were to do a standing double crochet there, then we would have to decrease in the next two stitches. And I don't want to do that. All right. Let's just leave it as it is for now. Okay. And your job is to continue across this row like so, doing your double crochets across and there you go. All right, so that's that. I'm not going to sit here and let you watch me do those. I'm going to get you to head off on your own, complete your double crochets across, yes, get to that very last stitch and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. Alrighty guys, so we've completed this row. Your tail should be down the base of your work and your stitch marker should be on that little slant that we're going down in. Alright, so for your size, you should have this many rows. Yes, all together that is, from the very, very base of our work there all the way up. Right, and for your stitch count, starting from this stitch marker here down to your last stitch, this is how many stitches you should have all together all right so that's that now best part is guys I need you to actually repeat the last two rows over and over again for your size all right now I believe extra small and small are probably only going to be doing uh, one more row I can't remember exactly but you will see your rows up on the screen in a minute but in the meantime you're actually uh, decreasing the next row, when you come across, you'll be decreasing at the end of your row, okay? The row after that, you'll be decreasing at the beginning. Remember, we're chaining up two and then doing a double crochet in the very next stitch. That's your decrease, all right? So what I want you to do is continue these last two rows over and over again, and I'll pop a little time stamp where you need to start. Extra small and small, you need to just do one more row, and that's that first row that we did here and that's at that time stamp everybody else do the rows for your size which they are right here and right now yes that's how many more rows you need to do and then i will meet you back here once you're done and we'll talk about what we're going to do next All right, guys, this is where you will be. You will have your little side going down like that and you will have your straight edge down the base of your vest. Now, uh, obviously, everybody's little side drop would be different and your count across here would be different as well. So what I want you to do for now is count your stitches across, not your double crochets, otherwise you might accidentally count the chains and the double. Make sure you're just counting your stitches up the top and this is what you should all have for your amounts. 
all right make sure you check to see if there are any errors anywhere but you should actually have that amount across in the meantime we're going to continue you would have ended up on that side you need to flip your work like normal except now we're going to be starting our rows and finishing our rows the way we were before with our standing double crochets all right so what you're going to do here is there's going to be no chains you would have just turned your work without a chain and in your stitch right there pop your hook in pull a loop through two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two once again you're doing that little side loop stitch there for your standing double crochet and there you go what I want you to do now is pop your stitch marker in there like normal this is as though you were doing a normal straight edge row yeah you're jumping straight into that very next stitch with your double crochet one into the next and so on and so forth all the way across your row all right so there it is you're not doing any more decreasing you're just doing uh, like a normal row as though you were doing your full length piece before where you started with them your normal standing double crochet and you end with a normal double crochet you turn and you start with normal standing but in the meantime what I want you to do is just complete this row get to the end of your row and I shall meet you there once you're done Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. Very exciting now. You should have the exact same amount of stitches as you had before. And here they are. Simply divine, marvellous, wonderful and sweet. Now, the best part guys is this is an end stretch for your vest. Get excited. What I want you to do is complete this row over and over and over again until we get to the end of our piece all right so how many rows is that i hear you ask have a look up on the screen right there right now gorgeous so you need to do this row right here for those amount of rows that are up on the screen right now yes and then meet me back here and we'll talk about casting off and what we're going to do next all right so head off on your own complete this row for the amount of rows for your size and I will meet you back here once you're done Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of these rows. Get excited because that row that you did right there was your last row for the back. Ah, very exciting, yes? Alright, <laughs> she's so naughty, isn't she? Very sing-songy. Alright, so what you want to do now, make sure that you count your stitches across and they are all correct. Yeah, because if not, you have to check your count. Oh, by the way, there's your stitch count. All right, so that's the amount of stitches you should have across. All right, so what we're going to do, and if you have completed your last stitch, where you would be is there, yeah? Your job is to just pull up a loop like that, and you're going to cut your work. However, this is optional, okay? What I want to do for me, I'm going to use this thread to attach my backs to my fronts. All right, or this back, this part of the back, that is. Not the other side because I forgot to do that in the beginning. All right, but I'm going to use this thread to attach to the front. So what I'm going to do is give myself a tail like that. Just double it. Even that might be too much, but for me it's enough, yeah? Give it a cut. You don't need to do this. You can actually just cut your end here and pull it through. So I'm just gonna cut it, pull this big long tail through. It's way too big. Just tighten it up a little bit there and I've got enough tail that goes across and back. Too much even, right? But that's going to attach this piece to our front when we're ready to do the front. But in the meantime, your job right now is to weave in your tails that you have dangling down. All right, so grab yourself a needle and any thread that you have that you shouldn't have, make sure you're working on the back of your work, 
all right so hopefully I can thread this needle because I'm using a thinner yarn I picked up my smaller needle but I think it's too small <laughs> it's too small by the looks of it all right so I did that off air it is the wrong needle I need to find my other one but in the meantime it doesn't matter for now all right so if this is the wrong side of your work you need to weave your yarn into the wrong area make sure it's on the wrong side of your work now you have a choice you could have left this thread and we could have crocheted over it when we did our um, border rows later but I want to weave it in a little bit let's get all the threads and things out of the way so you can see I want to weave it in a little bit across here to give it a little bit more strength to the top all right so we're going to do that now if I can find my tail there it is <laughs> couldn't find out where it was sitting all right so I did crochet over a little bit here and we're just going to go and what I usually do and it's an absolute no-no in crochet is split a little bit of the yarn but more on the inside I can feel my needle splitting the thread on the inside of the stitches now before you continue just check the front and make sure you can't see any of that needle and then just pull it through like so now to get that undone later that would be extremely difficult because I've split stitches yeah but you know what it's not enough that I've done it once I'm going to go back in the other direction being careful not to pull too much because what happens if I'll do it to show you if you pull it your work is going to go like that and you don't want that I'm oh, let's straighten it all up again making sure you're giving yourself enough um I don't know tension to pull it a little bit and it helps to actually pop your hand on the beginning thread so if you pulled it it's not going anywhere it's just tightening it up but it's not going anywhere so what you want to do is skip a little thread go over into some more stitching because I was here I've gone right over it into some more stitching splitting same area but in different threads I hope that makes sense now if you don't like doing this that's fine just Pull it straight through here and then you can crochet over it later and then weave it in under the um, border but I'm going to do it this way just for this one just to show you and again this is not necessary okay you can do it the other way now being careful don't pull it too much here yeah? now again yours truly I don't know if you know about me guys but I am really fussy so I'm going to go back one more time and of course in different areas it's almost the same but not okay just I forgot to check it before make sure you check your front so that you're not going through anywhere now if you wanted to once again you didn't have to do all of this you could have just left it here and crocheted over it later with your uh, border now I'm going to finish up there with this one and I'm going to continue with any other thread that I have dangling. Now, yours truly doesn't like to usually add a thread in the middle of my work. I like to add my threads here normally, yeah? So that when we put our border row on, we can crochet over the tail and then sew it in. The reason I've been doing it in the middle is because I don't have a lot of thread for this piece for my size because yours truly did have enough thread for her size mm, but someone seems to be two sizes bigger than she should be so I don't have enough thread for my size so what I'm doing is to save all my threads I'm doing it in the middle but you know what your best bid never do it in the middle if you can if you've got enough thread always do it along the side somewhere you can do it along the base if you're going to put a border row but I don't think we're going to put one uh, we're going to put a border row here only and around the neck edge the front neck edge as well all right so your job now guys and you know just to keep going you're going to weave in any ends that you have dangling now there's one for starters I have two ends up here uh, that was actually the end of the skein and I know that because I have the little knots there when I wound them up in the yarn winder yeah so I'm going to leave those because we're going to do a border row of single crochet up the top you don't have to worry about that's going to be the very final row that we do when all our pieces are put together yeah but in the meantime um, I wouldn't weave those in you can if you like you're welcome to do that you can weave it down into the back 
or you can leave it and we'll weave it into the border row which is what I'm going to do with these two threads. The only time you should really weave in is if you have some in the middle which I never do but I'm doing for this piece. All right and that'll teach me to actually order a little bit more yarn yeah. All right so the deal is to fold your little piece over your piece should marry up from there to there. All right, your stitch count shouldn't have changed. You may find that this row here, the very first row we did, will be a tiny, tiny little bit tighter than the row that you have there, only because you have the chains. And sometimes if you do your chains tight like yours truly, it can be really tight and pull. So don't worry, that will actually sort itself out when you attach your back to your fronts, okay? Now, um, if you are way over like that, then it might be that you have taken too many stitches off there when you were doing a decrease, yeah? And if you are just one or two stitches, again, it's most likely that you did your chains really tight. If this is over, once again, you may, if it's only over by a little tiny bit, your chains might be loose. If it's over by a lot, make sure that you did decrease properly here. All right, these are just little tips that you can think about whilst you're waiting for us to upload the next part, which will be part four. Ah, very exciting. All right, so your job now, guys, is to head off on your own, weave in any ends that you may have. You can hang on to your last one if you're going to sew your uh, back to your fronts with this one, then you can hang on to that. Otherwise, you're welcome to weave that end in as well. You can weave this one here in if you like. I didn't leave enough, obviously, to attach the front to the back on this one, but I'll use the front tail of the second front, whatever it is. Um, it's the, what side is that? That's the right side. Um, that's the left front. That'll be the left front once we're ready to do. I'll leave a long tail on my left front and that can attach there. Now, if you don't want to do that, you don't need to. You can just um, cut a piece of thread when you're ready to attach and sew your side seams together when you're ready. Now, this is your back complete, all right? So what I want you to do is join me next week at some stage. I haven't decided what day and I will upload part four, which will be either the left front or the right front, whichever. It'll be one of the fronts. Both of the fronts are going to have to be crocheted differently to be able to marry each other. Uh, but we're going to do one front first. If I, if it's a short video and I have time, I'll do the second front on the same video. If not, it'll just be the one front. All right. In the meantime, guys, your job is to weave in all your ends. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Do all the wonderful things that you guys, well, pretty much always do for me. And I will see everyone on our lives at 4 p.m. Wednesday afternoons, 10 a.m. Saturday mornings, Melbourne, Australia time marry that up with your country i will see you then and all i want to say right now is happy weaving in all your ends <laughs> ciao for now